Well, good morning. Here we are once again at the physics video lecture. This is physics 105A video lecture 10. Good, so really great topic today. We'll finally get into harmonic oscillations. But this follows from what we've been doing. So let's look at our discussion. We always are starting with Newton's law derivatives. We're doing Newton's law with a function that's purely a force that's purely a, func a function of position. Good. We know that we can have a potential energy that's just the integral of this and we get conservation of energy so we have a half m dx dt squared plus u of x is equal to e. So then we do what's called the quadrature. I don't know if I've given that expression yet, but we separate variables and we're going to express t as a function of x. And that was this expression here. So I just separated variables, integrated the dt equals t. And over here I had my 2 over m e minus u of x. And we have the plus and minus sign here. So this time we're going to take particular potential energy and work our way all the way through. So now let u of x be equal to b times x squared. Okay, we had b times x to the nth power. Now we're taking the second power and we're gonna rename this b into one half k, which is very convenient. So one half kx squared clearly a local minimum, so we can go ahead and graph it, u of x and x, right, it has a local minimum, we're going to let the local minimum be here at x equals zero, and we already learned that if we restrict the motion between minus and plus a, that that corresponds to a certain amount of energy. The energy in the case of my drawing here is right there. So that would be the energy, and in fact, here E is equal to one half K A squared. We're going to go ahead and take that into this expression and do the integral. <coughs> continue on over here. So what do we now have? We have t is equal to plus minus so we've got a 2 over m and that e is k over 2 so that cancels nicely. We're going to have k over m a squared minus x squared. Okay, so root k over m a squared minus x squared. I put a prime there again because that's just an integration variable. Then we can go from 0 to x. <clears throat> I'll just put x0 to x for now. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring out this root k over m. So I'm going to have root k over m times t is equal to x dx prime root a squared minus x squared. And we still have the plus minus. Okay, so we're looking at an inverse cosine here. And I'm going to let you guys calculate this out because it's only two more steps. So leave enough room in your notes because you can fill in the answer and you'll also, turn this in as homework. We're going to define, okay, 
So now let now let this is not a good thing. Try again. Let omega be root k divided by m. You can do a trig substitution because this is an inverse cosine. You can have x equal a cos omega t. Actually, not so fast. This is what we're going to arrive at. x equals a cos omega t plus alpha. That's going to be your final answer where alpha is just some constant. So homework, show this. You have one trig substitution here. A couple of ways to do this. If you do the inverse cosine, then you're going to use the minus sign. So you got the plus minus right here. This is the answer we obtain. Famous harmonic oscillations. The homework show this. Make sure you use this. This is the second power out of all the nth powers we did. And you're going to arrive at this answer. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll just put here so, uh, this is inverse cosine um, solve using a trig substitution. Yeah, so you've got your omega t plus alpha inverse cosine. And then when you take the cosine of both sides, you get this back. So yeah, very, very important calculation. This is one of the few from that x to the nth power that we can actually do. If we're, the ones that we can do just with elementary functions, we're doing all of them. So this function here, let's go ahead and continue on now. Of course, is well known. We're moving between negative a and a. We've got the t-axis here. If alpha equals zero, then we can just graph our cosine and keep going on and on. Okay, sinusoidal motion and amplitude independence. Okay, so this result we do two things. First of all we're just going to ponder it a bit and get some of its basic properties out and then we're going to see where else it comes from. And let's just go ahead and take this x of t is equal to a cos omega t plus alpha. Omega is root k over m. And of course, u of x was one half kx squared. And the energy is one half kA squared. So now we have the full characterization. So this is not just p 
periodic motion, but it's what's called harmonic motion. So we have periodic motion. And we have this frequency here, or angular frequency. You know, we typically, so I'll put this in parentheses, it's angular frequency, but we always just refer to this as the frequency. So, since we have a cosine or a sine, sinusoidal function, we have omega t equals 2 pi. So this is the period, period motion, period of the motion. T is equal to 2 pi over omega, 2 pi root, um, since we're dividing there, m over k. Now the frequency f is 1 over capital T, 1 over the period, so that would just be 1 over 2 pi root k over m. So we use these expressions interchangeably, the omega and the frequency f, so you just have to go from, from the context. Typically, a lot of problems we're asking for what's the frequency for a certain system, and then once we get to here, we're done. Okay, we, so we don't have to go from here to here. Fine, just give the angular frequency. Good, so we have that. The, the crucial property of this was the amplitude independence. Remember we were doing the, the u to the, where are we right here? We were doing u was proportional to x to the nth power, or magnitude of x to the nth power, and then there was an amplitude dependence of the period, but the case where n was equal to two was amplitude independent, and we're seeing it here again, right? The period, is independent of the amplitude. Amplitude's out front. Okay. So a very important note. You can say this is what characterizes harmonic oscillation, or one way to characterize them. Amplitude independent period. I'll put a red box around that. It's an important one. what characterizes this type of motion. We'll do one more thing with this. Got enough room here on the board. We'll go ahead and expand this thing out. We'll expand with the expansion of the cosine. So we have star here. We expand out the Expand out the cosine, we get x of t. x of t is equal to a cos omega t cos alpha minus a sine omega t sine alpha. We can write this as a cos alpha, I'll put a little bracket around here, cos omega t plus negative A sine alpha sine omega t. So these two formulations are, are equivalent. I could, for example, give x of t is equal to um, C cos omega t plus D sine omega t. So sometimes we set things up in this fashion. Linear, this, this combination of the cosine and the sine, or we have it in this form here. Cosine omega t plus some phase, and they are the same, right? They, they mean the same thing.
Okay. So everything you needed to know about functions this result, we're going to go back to the physics and investigate what type of physical situation leads to this very important type of motion here. So we're going to return to potential energy functions. energy functions with a local minimum. Potential energy functions with a local minimum. And we can come up with any number of these. A good one, I think I've shown this to you guys already, is one that looks like this. draw this a little more exaggerated. Okay. So we come down here and then approach this asymptotically. And this example is u of x, u of x is equal to a over x squared minus b divided by x, such that a and b are both positive. So how do we know that? This is a good time to practice these types of things. If we just look at the first a over x squared, I'll do this as a dotted line, dotted red line, a over x squared will look like that, right? The large x, asymptotically to zero here is x and for small x 1 over x squared goes up to infinity and we're, yeah we're just restricted to the positive x axis right here okay. now what about the minus b over x without knowing what a and b are we all we can say is that minus b over x is doing the same thing on the other side of the axis a and b are positive but now what we have is the following situation. For very small x, this 1 over x squared dominates this 1 over x. That's why the sum of these two for very small x is pulled up to the positive side. Let me get another color here. Maybe we can do this one black. Okay. And the other argument is, is that for very large x, this 1 over x squared, or a over x squared, gets small faster, and therefore the minus sign will dominate for very large x. So this is a strategy you use. You've got a few functions in your, in your library of functions whose behavior you know, and then you put together their composite behavior by an argument like this. So I'll just put this as a note. 1 over x squared dominates when x is small, or in the limit as x goes to 0, and negative 1 over x dominates when x is large, or going to infinity. But what we have here is a nice function with a local minimum. And we can say, well, that local minimum is here at x sub 0. And there are other great examples um, but this is a classic, so we'll just use this one. It has a lot of good features. So, 
what does this have to do with harmonic oscillations? I'll even write that down as a question. What does this u of x have to do with harmonic oscillations? Out of written harmonic oscillations up there, but that's what we're talking about. Okay, harmonic oscillations. Question mark. Okay, I'll answer that, so I'm going to erase this here. series about this local minimum here. So, it didn't look like I really located it that well, did I? Okay. More like right there. Okay. So let's expand. Expand U of X in a Taylor series. Generally speaking, we're talking about this u of x equals u of x sub 0 plus u prime of x sub 0 times x minus x 0 plus 1 half u second derivative x minus x 0 squared. And we could keep going 1 over 3 factorial third derivative at x 0 x minus x to 0 to the third, plus and so on. So you have as many higher order ones as you want. Now what have we done though? So this was about x sub 0. This is a constant. And remember that all the derivatives evaluated at some certain point are constant. So u prime is a constant, u double prime, u third derivative, so forth. u prime, however, is zero because we're choosing this local minimum. Zero. The second derivative does not have to be positive, but we're going to require that it be non-zero and positive. So greater than zero, that means we have a local minimum. And what we require for all these further terms, or what we're going to do is we're going to restrict x minus x sub zero so that all of these downstream terms are small. Okay. So we have this constant and, you know, in Newton's law, we have derivatives such that we can always you know, add and subtract an arbitrary constant to a potential energy. So our new potential energy, um, well, I'll do this in two steps. So we have u of x equals this u of x zero, we'll leave it there for now, plus one half u double prime of x zero, x minus x0 squared. Now let's factor out this, and then what do we have left? Okay. Plus u third derivative x0 over u double prime of x0. I guess I need a factor of 3 here. x minus x0 
plus there are now going to be higher order terms. I'll just write order of x minus x0 squared. All the higher ones downstream. Okay. That way I don't have to keep writing anymore. And what we're going to do, we're going to stipulate that everything here is much, much less than 1. So, much, much less than 1. And how can we do that? We want everything downstream to be much less than 1. The way we can do that is by keeping x minus x sub 0 sufficiently small. And sufficiently small means that everything downstream is much less than 1 by having x minus x0 small. So now things have simplified. We're going to ignore the constant. And without giving the potential a new name, we're just going to say that we have now obtained Now we've achieved an approximation. So now u of x is approximately equal to 1 half u double prime x0 x minus x0 squared. And again, without giving it another name, I'm just going to go for the equality. So for sufficiently small x minus x0, we have all, I'll just leave the, in a, the approximation sign here. For sufficiently small x minus x0, we have this, and this is of a quadratic form, right? x minus x0 squared. So this is really the parabola, and let's go ahead and draw this picture now, since we had this very nice graph, okay? x-axis, here's the x0, so this function here, up to some constant that we've, that we're ignoring, is really this parabola here, the parabola that just fits into, into this, uh, nests into this curve right here, and when we want x minus x0 to be small, we're talking about some small interval around here in which this parabola nests essentially perfectly with that curve. Okay. So that's the answer to the question I just had up here in red, what that has to do with harmonic motion. Anytime you're near a local uh, equilibrium point, we don't have any friction yet to worry about, so local minimum, so local equilibrium, then you're going to get harmonic motion. So let's go ahead and take this thing. Now, uh, back to Newton's law. So we have this, M, x second derivative is equal to f of x <clears throat> actually I'm going to do this differently let's let y equal x minus x0, okay. And if we go back into our t equals integral dx prime over m 
minus u of x, if we just do a change of variables, we can now have the same integral we did we had before. So I'm gonna let y equal x minus x zero, then we're gonna have u of y is equal to one half u double prime of x zero y squared or u of y is equal to one half k y squared. And then we can, I'll just put this in parentheses here. And then we can go back into the same calculation we did and we will find y of t is equal to a cos omega d plus alpha. Everything the same, since y is x minus x zero, then x is equal to x zero plus a cos omega t plus alpha. So there's the relation. And what we're going to do next is investigate a few more functions of this type. Because once we know how to do this, our task is pretty simple. You take a function, investigate it, get that second derivative, you know, locate the equilibrium, get that second derivative. Same thing as we had before here, actually. That's the one thing I have to um, add here. Note this letter K, in case we didn't know it, is just the U double prime evaluated at x sub zero. You may have seen that k as a spring constant in the past, and it still could be, but more generally it's the second derivative of potential energy evaluated at the equilibrium point. And so your frequency, which I have here again, I have my frequency here and here, your frequency is once, uh, is once again this root k over m, and that's the meaning of that k. All right, I'm going to consult the clock. So we'll just construct a couple more of these functions and discuss them. So yeah, definitely this is an, a, a really major event here to understand this whole derivation, Taylor series around a local minimum. Once you've done this, in your mind's eye, you just look at that, know that that's what's going on, look for that second derivative. Okay? But of course you want to have gone through all these steps to really justify them. And uh, that's why I've assigned that first one for the homework. Uh, the second one we're going to do in a couple of different ways. <clears throat> so maybe I'll write a summary of this whole thing now. Let's see, what would a summary look like? Summarize. <clears throat> we started out with Newton's law. Okay. We had either a potential energy U equals minus like that, okay, so we have potential energy, or we had a linear force law, so I'm going to get into the linear force law before we wrap this up, but right now we just have this potential energy, if u of x um, has a local minimum at 
x0 with u double prime of x0 positive <coughs> then with k being defined as u double prime of x0 omega root k over m, you're going to have motion x equals x0 plus a cos omega t plus alpha if x minus xz is x0 is sufficiently small. x minus x0 is sufficiently small. So I'll add a homework problem or two to this. I think we'll save the linear force law for next time. Let's see how we're doing time-wise. Yeah, this is good. So let's just do a couple of um, potential energies. So the first one, let's take u of x equals minus b x squared plus c x to the fourth. Find the frequency of small oscillations at uh, local min. Well, let's do a little sketch of this. It's not going to be bad. We have this is a symmetric function, and you've got a parabola down, but of course the x to the fourth is going to dominate for larger x. So you've got this double well here. You've got a local minimum, two places. That would be one example. The second one, we may as well tackle the one we've been talking about here. U of x equals use for a and b, I forget, doesn't matter. a over x squared minus b over x. a, b are positive and x is also positive. Okay. Find omega. You'll notice we're just now down to analyzing the potential energy. Okay. Once and for all, we figured this out here, so find omega. And we'll do a third one. U of x equals a over x plus b times x. And I should say, for all three of these, again, find omega, the local minimum, for all three of them, you always want to graph the thing first. I just did a, you know, just sketch a graph for all three. Sketch u of x for all three of these. Um, it's a good habit because then you start to associate with these functions, you know, the general form of these things with the function and then you see what you're doing, you're always just trying to find, you're really finding the curvature of the parabola that just fits in there at that point. Same with up there. Good. So the next thing we're going to do, and I'll just put that up here to remind, Mass times acceleration equals minus k times x. 
turns out that's what we have been doing. But I want to make that explicit next time and tie this all together. Good. So enjoy these problems. See you guys next time.